Hello, this is the first in a two-part series showing ways of protecting the data in your tables and queries. The article that is associated with this video is at islanddogs.co.uk protect tables queries and includes an example app with all the code you need in order to achieve the same effects in your own application. Now to make this clear, I'm not here trying to secure your databases against serious and determined hackers who are trying to break into your systems. It's not secure enough for that. What it's designed to do, however, is to limit the damage caused by knowledgeable users who are meddling, that they unlock the various security precautions that you put in and then investigate it and in doing so cause unintentional damage. I've wasted more time on support calls trying to deal with that sort of user than with any other type of damage to databases. As you already know, Access provides several ways of partly locking down database objects, and I'll show you some of those later. But even when you lock your databases down, and even in ACCDE files, tables and queries can still be directly edited. If you want to make them more secure against damage, then you can make them read-only. And to do that, we're going to use the fact that in Datasheet view, both tables and queries are actually a simple type of datasheet form sharing some of the same properties, not events, but the same properties, and therefore we can do things such as disable properties such as add, edit, delete, and filter. And if we do those, the tables become read-only. Let's have a look at the example database. The startup form explains the idea here, and to make it clear that for the purpose of this video, I've not locked down the database in the normal way, so I haven't hidden the navigation pane, and indeed I'm even showing hidden objects here deliberately. I've not restricted the, the ribbon in any way at all, nor in access options have I done some of the standard things that you would expect to do, such as hide the status bar, disable special keys such as Alt and F11 and Control G which allow you to get access to the Visual Basic Editor and the immediate window. I've not hidden the navigation pane nor have I disabled full menus or indeed shortcut menus. None of those things have been done and I'm going to leave them all in place for now. When I click on the forms I can edit them in any way I want to do. Same for this one. And this continuous form. Or the datasheet version. All of those are editable because they're based on a single table. Now, I want them to be editable because if I need to, I can apply code at startup which restricts what certain users can do but I cannot apply code to tables and queries. If I click on the same data here, but in table form, you'll see that I cannot edit any of the fields, nor with this table, that I showed you editing that earlier, nor this one. Nothing can be altered. The same is true for the queries based on these tables. That is read-only. There is one further table that is read-only by a different method. It's only got a single field and a single record, and I'm using a constraint to limit that one. And it's only on this table I'm doing that. In that particular case, the form also is read-only. It looks like you can alter it, but when you close and reopen it, you'll see it's back to the same as before. Constraints work in a different way. I'll explain that in a totally different video at a future date. But coming back to how I make the tables and the queries read-only for all the others without using a constraint. At startup, an auto-exec macro runs, and that does four things. It opens a form called FRM hide, and as you'd expect, it opens it hidden disables the shift bypass, locks the navigation pane, which means that you've got a lot of disabled items in your navigation pane here, which restricts what you can do with each type of object, and then finally opens the standard startup form. Now, the most important thing there, for the purpose of this video, is this form FRM hide. It's a very simple form. 
that's all there is to it hidden form running in the background it opens at startup and it stays running in the background till you close the app let's have a look at the code for it at the start it checks the shift bypass state it also has code to prevent you opening it directly from the navigation pane but neither of those are particularly important as far as this video is concerned the important bit is this timer event which is the only other bit of code it runs every half second I can alter the time interval if I wanted to and it runs one line of code set table query read only let's have a look at that code it's in a module called mod read only and it uses the fact then that tables and queries as I said earlier are a type of datasheet form when opened in datasheet view I want the forms even if they've got the same name as the table here students students I want the forms to be editable as data sheets but I don't want the tables and queries to be so I'm going to use the fact that in a table or a query you can have sub data sheets with master fields and child fields I wouldn't recommend you do that but you can do however in a form that is not available you cannot have sub data sheets in a form and therefore in a form properties like link child fields and link master fields are not available and if you try to actually look at that code for the property link child fields for example you'll get an error so when this runs I look to see if it's a form by checking if an error occurs when that line runs if it does then you exit the function you don't do anything else however if there's no error then you set the currently active data sheet when you just open there to be equal to this variable frm the form object and then providing you've got a form object you then just run the following four lines of code allow edits false, allow additions false, allow deletions false and optionally allow filters false so it becomes a totally read only table or query doesn't happen for forms remember because the code exits before it reaches that stage due to the error condition and that basically is all there is to this so your tables and queries have become read only with that one very simple bit of code of course database is not still totally locked down users can right click on here and they can still go to design view they can still export to Excel they can also copy the data and put it into another application such as notepad so you've only got limited restrictions here we could easily remove the shortcut menus and when we close and reopen we now have no right click menus so it's a little bit more secure but even so there's other ways that we can protect still further and I will show you that in a future video that's all for today thanks for watching as always if you found it useful please add a like and leave a comment suggest topics for future videos in the series and do subscribe and then you'll know when new videos are uploaded thanks again I'll see you soon